Thank you for staying with us here on The Key Points on TV3 and 3 FM 92.7. Now, Joe Mahama is currently in Addis Ababa for a meeting of the board of the Tana High Level Forum on Security in Africa, which he chairs. But before he left town, the former president took some time out of his busy schedule to remind Ghanaians of what he deems to be the current state of our country. He touched on the challenges of the economy. He questioned the bad performance of the economic management team, the vice president, the finance minister. He sought to remind us that the current administration seems unwilling to account for funds accrued to the government to the tune of 33 uh, billion uh, CDs. He announced the e-levy will be abolished if Ghanaians vote him into office come 2025. Should we take the message seriously and not shoot the messenger? How realistic are some of the pledges he has made? And is the Akufo Ado government remaining tone deaf to the concerns raised? Uh, it's here on TV3 and 3FM. And our guests this morning uh, for that, uh, joining us for the first time to my immediate uh, left, is Dennis Abwaji, properly known as Miracles. You're welcome. He is a director of local governance at the president. He's a former uh, MCE as well. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Jifa. How are we doing? Nice. I'm doing fine. Fine Thank weather. You. Yes, good weather. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the Honorable Roxon Dapiamako. He is the MP for South Dai. He's a lawyer as well and a regular on our show as well. Thank you both for joining us. It's my pleasure. Great. So I'll start with you, um, Dennis. You heard the issues the, the president raised. Okay, or let me rather backtrack. Let me just replay a bit of what from uh, President Mahama said, one about the state of the economy and then, of course, abolishing e-levy. Those directly responsible for the economic crisis must bear responsibility. And it is inconceivable that the Minister of Finance remains at post. Having presided over the worst economic meltdown in Ghana's recent history, the President must, as a matter of urgency and without further delay, relieve the Minister of Finance of his position and appoint someone who is focused on national rather than self-interest and who has the requisite skill, experience and knowledge of public financial management in his stead. The personal benefit that the current Minister and his cronies derive from borrowing on our behalf through the commissions they take by their companies who serve as transaction advisors, raises an unacceptable conflict of interest situation which, which must end immediately. That the economic management team, that solid team, has failed. <laughs> and must be reconstituted immediately. <laughs> with fresh ideas and perspectives. Having supervised the worst public debt buildup the worst budget deficit, the worst debt to GDP ratio, the worst credit, uh, credit rating downgrades, and the worst performing currency in the world, the worst crisis of confidence in our economy, the highest fuel prices ever, the worst ever rising inflation, unprecedented hardships, etc. The current head of the economic management team has clearly fallen from his ivory tower as a self styled economic messiah to a poster boy for economic mismanagement. And his leadership of the economic management team is no longer tenable. Government's desperation to tax Ghanaians to get this nation out of the hellhole it has dumped us will not succeed because government's own budget proposals show that the e levy will not make any significant contribution in resolving our problems, but will exact an adverse toll on the people of Ghana. We in the NDC do not oppose taxation as a principle. We will not be pretentious and couch fanciful slogans to condemn the principle of taxation like the MPP did in the past. We are, however, implacably opposed to distortionary and burdensome taxes like the e-levy. That only falls on and to endure more suffering. A new National Democratic Congress of men, not willing, with the votes of the sovereign people of Ghana in 2025, will repeal the Levy Act. Thank you very much for staying with us. So that was former President uh, Mahama earlier this week. Let me turn to uh, Dennis Abwaji. So, Dennis, we are currently in...
difficult economic times. Uh, food inflation um, is very high. It's at 19% at the last data provided by the GSS. But when it even comes to, you know, inflation in the economy, electricity, 25%, transport, 18.3%. And today we are learning that there'll be a 20% increase in fuel prices. There's a question about whether really the government is listening. If I let me say a very warm good morning to your cherished viewers and to my senior my honorable member of parliament. I, I think that I, listening to the former president and um, trying to be presidential candidate of the NDC, there's only one takeaway. A politician who is ready himself to run for an election, trying to latch onto a political opportunity and make empty, unachievable promises just for the purposes of political expediency and to improve his electoral fortunes as, as we work towards our elections in 2024. I say this on the back of the fact that we are not listening to someone we haven't experienced before. Um, we are listening to somebody who barely six or seven years ago was in charge of this country and had an opportunity to be able to probably set us on a path that um, would lead us into the realms of not being where we find ourselves today. When the MPP took office, there were clear lines or clear evidence of the state in complete gloom and darkness. There were specific challenges that we faced as a people. And all of these economic figures and indicators that you gave were probably added worse. Some of them, of course, were improved between 2017 and 2019. The growth of the economy, we cannot run away from that, had grown up to close to about 7% thereabout in 2019 from our 3%. We had improved the business environment where interest rates had dropped to about 13% from about 28%. We had an economy where joblessness amongst the youth was in the highest, to the point where, for the first time probably in the world, you had unemployed people coming together to form an association. We had an, an economy where we are unable to take care of our health bills and take care of our, the health needs of our people because the national health insurance was near collapse. We had an economy where we had no emergency care system, absolutely zero almost zero proper emergency system as a result of the collapse of the ambulance system. There was a freeze on public sector employment. The state was in complete darkness as a result of an energy crisis that was caused by us and not by any other external forces. Because at the time, there was a debate as to what was the cause of the energy crisis. We in the MPP consistently said that Ghana had enough capacity to generate, and that the challenge was with money to be able to procure the needed fuel to power generators to give our people electricity. The repercussions of the energy crisis were that industries had to shut down. Those who had to remain in business had to function or produce at 50%. As a result of that, a lot of workers were laid off. Our health system was struck into more crisis because then at some point in some hospitals, medical logistics were getting damaged or destroyed. Theaters were using flashlights to perform these. We saw all these pictures around. But, and a but, host but, more. But, but Dennis, if I you, would, if I know, but my point is, you can't refer to things from I, six I, years ago no, no. to answer the question I, am I building, asked you. I am building a point. <laughs> I am building a point. Let me make my point. So all of these things were supervised by the person who is speaking now. That's a point I'm making. 
all of these things were supervised by the person speaking now. The person who told the people of Ghana some time ago that if he's going to lose an election by taking away the social safety net of the people, i.e. allowances that poor people were using to go to school and all of that, so be it. The person who said that if people feel that electricity is too expensive, then they should probably stop using mobile phones and stop charging their phones and all of that. That is him speaking now. So I think that if we are at a crossroad, as he, he tries to put it, then really, Ghana is not the one that is at the crossroad. But it is he, the former president, who is in the crossroad as to whether he has the ability to become president again to lead us. It is the NDC who are at a crossroad. Who know for a fact, with all indicators and all research showing that the only abatross or burden they have to carry now is to make the former president a presidential candidate again, with which they are likely to lose an election because, obviously, there is nothing new that the new the, the National Democratic Congress as a party is bringing on board that the people haven't sent before. Neither are they coming with a new leader that the people will believe that is coming with fresh ideas. Fast forward. The people of Ghana against all these challenges, supervised by the man speaking today, handed over power to us. We came on the back of specific promises. Between 2017 and 2019, all of these indicators that you were given had improved dramatically, drastically, and you agree with me, from 2016 figures to 2019. The growth of the economy, the inflation rate, interest rates, private tech sector stimulation, even tax, taxes that the people were paying had been reduced drastically. Almost about 17 taxes that he is complaining about, taxes now, 17 of these taxes had been removed so that private sector could thrive. We had our electricity on, for which reason manufacturing and industries were doing well, for which reason people were laid off from, from, from their businesses and, and, and companies. Some of them were recalled to be, able to, to be able to work. I didn't have to go home to a light out in my house and wait for it to come back in three days. We had restored allowances for poor people to be able to go to school. During his time, 100,000 of Ghanaians on the average every year had their children dropping out of school just because of money. In our senior high schools, children were sitting under trees to have their dinner. Children were running shifts when it comes to dining hall eating. Today, as a result of this government's investment in the education sector, almost every child that is willing to go to senior high school education is being funded by the states and is going to school for free. For which reason, the long term, the very long term decision as to where we want to go in terms of education has been fixed. So the real crossroad for education for Ghana was in 2016, when the children were dropping out, when children were struggling to find infrastructure. We took a decision in 2017 as to where we want to go. And that decision was to make it affordable and remove the barrier of money for the people, which we did. So we took a decision as to the direction. We had gone past the crossroad as a country. Okay. In so, terms of health. Okay. Can, I, I in terms of health. I, it's not a full monologue. You, I wanted your preliminary comments. Okay. So I will come back to the other things. So, um, Honorable Dapia Makpo, um, I know you want to respond to some of the issues he raised. But first, former President Mahama called for the removal or the replacement of the economic management team, the vice president, the finance minister, and then goes on to indicate that E-Levy will be abolished if um, Ghanaians vote him into office. There are questions about whether that is even realistic. Your thoughts? Thank you very much. Um, good morning to my people in South Dain. Teki Kbali Tongo. Uh, I say good morning, and also to your viewers. First of all, what did GM say? GM gave an overview of the issues as they pertain now in, in, um, in the country. So he spoke about the judiciary. He spoke about the, the economic doldrums that we find ourselves in. He spoke about the the inordinate desire by the government not to be accountable for public funds expended. He spoke about the state of affairs in terms of education. He spoke about health. He spoke about governance. 
and my brother sits here and says what? That the things that Mama spoke about are not true? That you didn't get over 32 billion in terms of COVID relief and you have refused to account for them? Is he saying that it's not true? He spoke about education by way of rebutter. I have in my hand the Get Fund report to Parliament. This is dated 24th March 2022. This was the formula they brought this year for us to approve for them. As part of that formula approval, this is what Get Fund is saying. When you take projects that they came to meet in 2017, so they are qualified under pre-2017 and 2017 up to date. In 2017, under tertiary, they came to meet 127 projects. Between 2017 to date, they have done zero. I am not speaking. This is get fun. This is their data. So if it sits here and says that they, they, they've invested in infrastructure, I wish, I wish to know which infrastructure it speaks of. Get fun is saying they have done zero. Between 2017 and now, they have done nothing at the tertiary level. Nothing. So... But that's just one out of there is basic, the second. So, so allow, second. allow me to get there. Okay. So, but I want to start with the zero. They have done zero. So, you should stop eulogizing things about uh, education because they have done zero. Let's go to second cycle. They came to meet 513 projects. Between 2014, yeah, 2017 and 2022, how many have they done? 489. They can't beat the NDC record. I am not speaking. This is Get Fund's own record. It's just a few no, numbers down. No, from the it is not a few numbers. He sat here and eulogized and spoke eloquently about education. I'm giving you the raw statistics submitted by their own agency. So let's go to e blocks. They came to meet e-blocks, 123, 49 completed. As, as at now, they have completed none. They've only operationalized 27. What I know is 25 were completed. No, by whom? Don't, no, that is before the NDC left office because yes. you had a World Bank facility. No, to no, no, we completed, that. we completed 49. Really? Because that's not what the no, education we, minister no, came to yes, tell us later. Yes, because later listen, on, what he Jifa, did. Can I, okay, can I finish? I'm just trying to, because I interviewed the, him, the, the, I'm the just 20, relaying what the, he told me. The 23, mm -hmm. or the 27 were World Bank funded. Mm -hmm. The other that constituted the 49 were GOG funded. They were completed. And operationalized. The cry has been about those that were at advanced stages of completion and have been abandoned. That has been the, the bone of contention for all these years. Let's go to model schools. There's nothing. Now, if you go to basic, they came to meet 690 projects. 690. Between 2017 and now, they've done 200, 424. So who has done better? With all your talk about education and free SHS, who has done better in terms of infrastructure built up in education? But you cannot deny that free SHS has moved a significant quantum I have, of I haven't of denied that. People. But, but we have serious implementation problems which is eroding the gains of free SHS. And, let, and, and this is about why. When you, when you move a student, when you move a 13-year-old from Bulga and brings her to Takrade, to Porta Girls, as a day student, you are asking the parent to go and rent an apartment for the child, a 13-year-old child. Before they came to power, the policy has been that all those students coming from far were given boarding status. Describe that policy. Describe that policy. So our parents in my constituency, in my district, who will have to fall on you to look for accommodation and pay for them, children from afar. Is that, is, that, is that what we anticipated under free SHS? So parents, in addition to, to caring for the students, they must, they must maintain, they must pay rent, exorbitant rent. So not in my district alone, in other places. 
Okay, so you've talked so, about education. Yes. He pointed to the economic indicators between 2017 and 2019. I will address that. I will address that. Jifa, you took an economy that was on the ascendancy from a 3.6 growth rate to 8.4. In 2017, he should tell me what they did in 2017 that brought about that 8.6 growth rate. Nothing, because you see, even DCEs were appointed as far into time as October 2017. DCEs. It took him so long to to put his government together. He didn't do anything in 2017. The gains for 2017 were the gains from 2016, which were which the World Bank itself has projected that the 2017 economy will grow above 8%. Ever since they achieved that figure, the economy has been in a decline. Check, check the growth rate. It declined from that eight, eight, above 8% 8 high in 2017 to a 0 0.4 last year. So, so what are they talking about? And they keep quoting that food prices. Uh, you also said food prices are what, 19%? Yeah, food, Jifa, in, food, I, food inflation is 23%. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Normal inflation you, is 19%. Are you, are you sure you, you go to the market? Oh. It may sound rhetorical, but do you go to the market? <laughs> no, but food this prices, is from the Ghana Statistical yes, Service and, data. And I, think, and I think that I have a problem with that, that percent too. The twenty food, food okay. prices are incredibly higher than that. Okay, so what I would say though is that the GSS data breaks yes. down the inflation yes. per region yes. as well. But I'm so saying, some regions are actually much but, higher. But I'm saying that the reality is that... The, it's the, higher the, than the their 23%. Annual, the annual, the annual, the annual um, uh, inflation increase. Food inflation, of, is it higher yes, than 23%? It is. That's, the, the things okay, we bought last year... I can only by, rely on the data. Yes, but the things we bought last year have, have doubled in terms of price. So that cannot be a 19%. If they were 19%, people wouldn't be crying. So prices have even quadrupled. So this 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 attempt to to whitewash some of these figures for me it, it, it bothers me. Okay. But the real the reality is that, for instance, between January and now, in January I needed about sixty thousand Ghana cities to get let's say ten thousand dollars. Now, I need about 80,000 Ghana cities to get $10,000. So the value of money has deteriorated by about 20,000 Ghana cities. That is the reality. Okay, you didn't answer my question on the e levy, but you... No, 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 oh, no, 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 no you no, can no, hold no, on to no, it. No, let me finish. Okay. Why does anybody say that we cannot repeal e levy? What does it take? Oh, because... Hold on, hold on. What does it take to repeal a tax law? Is it not a bill to parliament? So, so tell me, is but it, you, is it astro, be, is it astro, okay, but is it you astrophysics? Cannot, you cannot be sure what you will find when you come into office if you do in 2025. Are they hiding something? Oh, no, it's not about hiding. So but if they're the not hiding is, anything, Jifa, so let's, let's make a point. If they are not hiding anything and they think that the, the state of, 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 our, of our economic deterioration is what we know on the surface, is what we know is the reality. Repealing e levy is the easiest. And I think that it is something we can do on the first day of January 2025. First day. E levy is a skeletal legislation. It's about eight, nine provisions. It is not, it's not a voluminous bill, a uh, uh, law. It's easy to repeal. So if they are questioning the commitment of the man who says he will lead his government to repeal it, <laughs> I, I, I laugh. Okay. We will repeal it the first day. Me, let me even better GM's GM statement. We will do it first day, first day of business, Parliament, 27th January 2025. That is when we'll do that. Yes. You, uh, you know the Dennis. way the way they so, say it. So is. so so he questions the current environment. It's not about the messenger. It's about the state of food prices, the increases in fuel, the deterioration in the currency. They're just all these things that have happened in the last eight months. For the, that for the purposes of our viewers, I think we need to set some record straight. Mm. The, the, and then let's settle the education conversation, then I'll come to this. You see, sometimes when the figures are being churned out, 
I, I wonder. And I ask myself where they get their figures from. Please. I am oh, going please, to please, August. Please, please, no, please, oh, honorable. I am. Please, I, I take exception to that. I have shown you your get fund report. Okay, but this is a document you are holding. Uh, and I'm but telling if you, you are that, not holding it, let, it wait, doesn't mean oh, it is not authentic. This is what you're talking about. No more interjection. No, 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 I, it's look, on a letter. Look at the document. This is the so document. If you, if you want on. to Jifa, say, you want your program to run. No, so I think it's unfair. I think it's unfair. I will not oh, allow no. him to speak no, in so the manner cannot, that he's. Okay, but hold on, there is. He I'm has a document. I doubt it. No, you can't doubt. Why not? Because it's you on see, a letter. They, they doubt the truth. This are so the people you, who doubt the truth. So if you have alternative, no, you know what you know what it should do. If you have alternative, I am going to give you. So just say that I have an alternative. I doubt it because the figures I have. This is 24th March 2022. Okay, so go. This is from Parliament. So let me. So let me. So give give your figure. So give your figure. Don't say that. So I doubt it. No. So now, the MPP when we came to government. Where are you quoting from? We inherited. Where are you quoting from? Okay. I'm quoting a document. A document. Where is the document? Okay, hold would on. Would you let me? Why would you do this? Oh, no, where is the document? Is I have okay. given you a document. Honorable, so let's brought, let him quote. He hasn't where? quoted anything. Okay, so show me what you are quoting. Can you, can you, can you let me, Go can ahead. You let me complete? Go so ahead. I'm showing you a Gets Fund report that was presented by the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. It was even presented to the press. Okay, it was presented to the press. So can I proceed? Jifa, Good. Where is the document? Now. He's on, it's on his phone. Well, so I'll send it to you. The same way he's giving you a Dakar copy. The same way he's giving you a Dakar copy. okay. Get one document. Let him read the data. No, when. Let him read the data. Get one document dated when? Let him read the data. So, Dennis, um, tell us. I take serious exception both to of this you are taking, unnecessary Both of you are taking exception. I won't let you lie. No, no. I won't let you lie. So, because honorable, if please. you want to quote the document, give me the date honorable, of the document. Honorable, please. Honorable, please. You've quoted yours. You Let's hear March his. 2022. Get honorable, one document. Let's to hear Parliament. his. Let's he should bring his counter documents. Before, yes, please go so ahead. So he's quoting, he's quoting a document yes. in 2022. Yes. And putting out figures that he's supposed to put out on 2017, 2020, 2021. That are even false. Let me give you the actual figures. You can verify the two later and put it out for your viewers to know. Now, on old projects, when we took office on old projects. Which this document is. Get fun project. No, I, I'll share no, with you. Please, I just I just want the dating. That's I all. said I am telling you that I am even giving you a document presented as far back as 2020. Okay. By the 2020. Ministry of Education. Okay. And you realize that his figures. His, I'm giving you 2020 oh, document. Do classrooms vanish? Would you stop this? Okay. Honorable, you to stop this. Honorable, you have, please. You have no document. Honorable, please. You are not from any gentlemen, document. please. Gentlemen, please. Uh, you, let you, him You want some small phone in hand and say no, you are no, quoting no, from no. documents. We all you are holding a certain photocopy, fictitious document. A certain photocopy, okay, fictitious document. So let's take a commercial document. break and we'll yeah, come back. Thanks very much for staying with us uh, on the key points. So uh, let's come back to the studio uh, after that break. So tell us, what do you say um, are the figures? I am saying that physical infrastructure do not disappear into air. If a classroom block, Can you give the breakdown if the way a classroom block is built in 2017, mm -hmm. it cannot be missing in 2022. The figures that honorable member of parliament gave, those figures are not accurate. Now, when we came to office, and I'm giving you a document as far back as August 2020, that will only show you that if you have a building in 2020, it cannot disappear in 2022. So if we say we have three classroom blocks, which we can point to in 2020, you can't come and say in 2022 that there were two. When we came to office, we, this is the report we had. 7,201 projects in all, out of which 3,897 of these projects were reported as ongoing. This included the e-blocks. As at that time, the time of this report, I guess 2020, almost two years ago, 96% of payment has been made for these projects by this government. And as a result of that, 409 of these old projects that we inherited had been completed within the period. The rest are at various stages of completion. Gets fund, it was presented to even you, the media. Now, new projects. This government between that period had initiated 1,666 new projects. Out of this, about 39 of them were renovations, and nine of them were completely new schools. Those STEM schools that you see around now, they are Bombosu schools and all those STEM new model schools. And then there were two centers of excellence, and others. 
These were the new projects that had been initiated under this new government. Now, the e blocks. The government within the period between 2014 and 2016, that is the NDC government, initiated a total of 124 community SHS projects. And they were awarded between that period, 2014 and 2016, of which 23 were funded by the World Bank. 23 were funded by the World Bank, and the remaining 101 by the GET Fund. 27 more had been completed between 2017 when we came into office and 2020 when, we, we, when this report was being put up. So if you come and see that within the period, nothing had been done on, this, on these e-blocks and that zero had been done on it, that's a complete falsehood. The breakdown of these projects are here. And I've sent you a copy of the project where you see the World Bank breakdown and then you see the Get Fund breakdown. And the project, the document that I've sent you has pictures of the project okay, to so buttress how do the points that we make it. The figure from that Jifa, document. Please allow me. I will allow you. I, we no, have no, the Get Fund no, boss no, no, on. I will allow you. I will allow you. I will allow you. We told you respect. I will allow you. We told you respect. He opened his comments by saying that the figures I put out were false. I will allow you. He quoted from a 2020 document. Yes. I have in my hand. A 24th of March 2022. Is my time being taken away from me? No, it's not. So I, have, I, I have. I have. Ah, but he's rebutted. He spoke first. No, so he's he's spoken and just, he's speaking again. Honorable, just hold on. I will allow you. If I let so me do it, if I, people are listening. I know. I beg you. I beg of I you. Know. People are listening. No, no. People are listening. When you have your turn, I am saying this is my document. Yes. You dated. You, hold on. Dated 24th of March. Indicated hold on, that hold on. If I address to Parliament, I get you. You I, I take point. you. No, I You've take made that no. Point. You've taken I, us through. No, if I hold on, I take you what to page six. Here? You've taken document. us through. He, he has also look, mentioned. He has sent a document. He still says that it is inaccurate. Okay, so let's hear from the. So if you don't stop him describing so no, so this as me, inaccurate, no, I'll have I, a problem. I, no, I've said that this is a parliamentary document. I've told him that you cannot say it is false. He can have but a problem with the document that, that is brought to parliament. Now? Yeah, so the get from boss is on. And after make, all, he can make say that point. he can't say that the figures I'm quoting are wrong. Are you order? Yes. Thank call you. who to yes. order? You need to call you to order. Call to order. Oh, gentlemen, you please. should be called to now, order. Now we can't even do the program, please. Because, yes, because it's misbehaving. Yes. Well, I asked you it's a question. How do you reconcile this latest figure with what you are? That doing? is why I am telling you on authority, me sitting here, that this document that is here, I find it strange. Okay. That a, a, um, a building that was built as far back as 2019, 2020 would find itself missing. By the time you are working on it, all right. In so let's hear from so the guest fund. I think okay. the guest fund. Yes. I think the guest fund. So let me on let the, me on, on hear the from the guest fund administrator, Mr. Richard Boedu. Good morning, Mr. Boedu. If you can hear us, so Mr. Boedu, you have a pension for doing this. The guest fund administrator is joining us. Good morning, Mr. Boedu. Good Hello, Mr. Boedu. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. yes. Okay. Great. So now there is a dispute in my studio about get fund projects that have been provided. The Honorable Dapia Makwa is reading from the most recent communication to Parliament, uh, 2022, and we have the director for local governance in the studio from the presidency. He's reading from a document from 2020, which was presented. The numbers don't add up. Can you give us a bit more clarity? Okay. Uh, uh, Jifa, um, thank you for your, your viewers and the listeners. Um, Honorable Desi uh, Amato, Honorable Desi Amato, um, the document that is presenting is from uh, Parliament. It was presented to Parliament during our tribution from that. That is Table 4, um, which has been completed project as at 31st December 2020. Uh, so it's, uh, what he is um, talking about, just projects that have been completed from 2021. It will not include new projects that have been added on if it's not been completed. Um, what he did, uh, I think, was something that is a, 
selective um, uh, type of information. No, so let when me ask. Change, so let me ask. When you go to change four on that same document, we have uncompleted project. There you find out that funds has been provided for tertiary. I think our Hello. line has... Yes, can you hear me? So I wanted yes, to ask I can you... Hear you. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to ask you, you say that the projects in the document presented to Parliament 2022 are, are data provided up until 2020, completed projects as of 2020. Yes, um, what I'm saying is, um, in that front, we update the projects that we do, because day in and day out, projects are being awarded and projects are being completed. So at any point in time, there is a date that will let you know uh, the add-ons or um, those that have been completed, and then we, 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 take on, uh, we, we keep on updating it. Like, uh, um, if you look at the table six of that same document, it shows you the number of projects that are outstanding and those that we've added on. For instance, we said that there's no tertiary project that has been added on. But if you go to the uncompleted, you find out that at least there is a number in there. So what so I do, so what I want clarity on is that there is a two year lime time lag with the data that you presented to parliament as of this year. Can I come again? So, for instance, the completed projects, all of these end mm -hmm. at 2020. So, what it means is yeah. that since 2021 and even part of this year, 2022, that data is not included. It is included under uncompleted. Is that correct? No. Um, if, I, if I get you right, the document that we, we provided is an update up to um, the, uh, uh, when we presented it, that was in, in March. Yes, it's an update. So it, means, so it means that any information there is information you have gathered and are confident of ending the year 2020. 20, yeah, 2021. Okay, okay. That is up to 2021. Up to 2021. Yes. yes. Okay, so are you completing projects in the tertiary space this year? Yes, yeah, that is that is even if you look at the document, if you look at the, the document itself, it shows that 2,500 and uh, uh, 2,257 2, projects have been completed. Okay, so so your yeah, view, yeah. so so we have projects in the tertiary space which are being done. It's not zero. Yes, that is the, the no uh, project since 2017 up to date for the new ones have been completed. Do you get it? So since 2017. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since to, I want to understand the tertiary space because yes. Honorable Dafia Mako said there has been nothing done there at all. So I want clarity. Have the, are there projects completed? Nothing completed. Nothing completed. There was not completed. I said completed. I beg your pardon, gentlemen. I beg your pardon, gentlemen. I beg your pardon, gentlemen. So you find out that. Unfortunately, yes, honorable. So, sorry, I beg your pardon. Gentlemen, please let me just get. Gentlemen, please allow me to. Gentlemen, please allow me. Allow me to just finish. Honorable, allow us to just finish. You will find out that the total number of projects completed in tertiary is 127. When we come to the second cycle institution, it's 1,000. And two, when we come to uh, the second cycle, it is, um, when you come to the e block, it is 14. When you come to the model schools, we haven't finished the model schools, so that means zero. 
even though we started the model school zero, when it comes to TVET centers, we started the project, but we haven't completed. So that it will be zero. When okay. it comes to basics, those that we've also completed is 1,114. So a total of 2,257 has been completed. Okay. All right. I think we've got... So the marriage thing that nothing has been done as a tech guy is wrong. Okay, I think we've got... Uh, 127 yeah, of that has been completed. I think we've got... I think we've got... I think we've got the clarity Madam, we Madam, need. Madam, can you discipline Yes, let yes, me, Mr. Let me, this point. let me make this point. Get fund, we've changed the way that we do projects in our side. I'll be coming to the studio to brief, to brief you. We, we are now... Uh, trying to finish all the ongoing projects. We have a three-year plan to finish all ongoing projects. We have budget for it to complete all ongoing projects. That is the, uh, the, the essence of um, the presentation. That is the key point that I delivered to Parliament in their presentation. And there is also um, a point that is also going around that Get Fund has received $1.5 billion and they haven't made any good use of it. A parliament who have been trying to hit this point. We've been given approval to go and borrow 1.5 billion in tranches. And out of that, SEC, Security and Exchange Commission, has approved only one billion dollars, the city equivalent of 5.5 uh, billion Ghana cities. Out of the 5.5 billion Ghana cities, it is only 2.5 billion that Get Fund has been able to access through the board. So it's not the 1.5 billion that they go about saying that Get Fund has received 1.5 billion, the city equivalent of 1.5 billion dollars, and they haven't, uh, they, they can't provide anything uh, for them to show. Okay. The other question. The, story, the, the other question. So finally, because I think that point is well made. So has the get fund been collateralized? Because that is the other point we keep getting that funds from get fund have been collateralized, and that is why we are not seeing significant move on a lot of the projects in the education space. Madam, um, it depends on how you 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 will call it. But there is something that I've been on air to explain. The, the process of the securitization that we, 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 we did. Um, it, it, I have to come to the studio to explain for you to see the savings that we're making even out of this securitization that we've done. So how often do you get your inflows? Do you have enough inflows? Because we all pay the get fund levy when we buy um, anything and, and all that. But I know that the minority in Parliament has complained about returns to the various statutory funds like yours. Yeah, Madam, um, I would say, I would say the inflow has not been what we were expecting. Um, there, 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 there's a huge amount um, left for them to release to us. And that is something that we work in with finance for them to um, come out to, to uh, our aid. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Uh, Dr. Richard Buedu. Um, I will find time to have you in the studio if, if to further... Stay on, stay on okay, um, Dr. Buedu, we'll, we'll let him stay on the line so that he can hear a few things. The but, but, Doc, the uh, sorry, Honorable Dr. Yamako, I think it's been clarified. No, no, he has it clarified. He has. Hold on. He has. If I hold on. You have not even allowed I, Dennis to no, make his point. I have the allowed point, him. The point is I, that... I have recounted Okay, the Dennis. point is that the Get Fund Administrator now points us to the fact that all this data is up to 2020. It means that whatever Dennis is presenting from that 2020 document is not entirely different. There is a lag of two years or a year and a half which has not been accounted for. Uh, Jifa, can I say this? I didn't finish my uh, uh, Can I say this? No. So this is a document... I'll come to they, you. They brought, this is a document you, he brought to Parliament. Yes, if so he has page, told you. Yeah, if you go to page you four, heard him. paragraph three of that document, he says, Mr. Chairman, in 2021... We updated this house of the status of the Get Fund Securitization Program. We reported the transition from the syndicated loan structure to a bond program, which necessitated the setting up of special purpose vehicle called Dutch Trust. 
And he says that the securitization is what? He says there are different levels. How are they different levels? How is it okay, different? Okay, so level? I think this one you, you told okay, so I'll let him. So there are two. Please allow no, him, two, Dennis, to make two, his point, please. Two. I have allowed him. Two. No, you haven't. I have you allowed him. You've been the Diffa, only one speaking Diffa, for the last Diffa, five minutes. I have allowed him. This is your final Diffa, point, so that I can let Diffa, him make the, his point. The, the table that Mr. Wedu spoke about. This is the table. Mm. He has written that before 2017. They completed 127 projects before 2017. I'm not saying. They are saying. After 2017, that's 2017 to date, you have completed zero. No, so he says that, ah, those, that projects, no? those projects are the, under the how, uncompleted. How is they that a no? How so is that a no? That in. So, okay, so, so, so what he came to tell parliament was wrong? So he has made, he has clarified How do you clarify so this is why you haven't if, uh, clarified that okay, to Parliament? Okay, so yes, if, uh, Dennis, I, yes, I, your point now. I think that, I mean, I haven't had time to speak Sorry, to go ahead now. Oh, no, it's okay, it's okay. I think the um, executive director for the Get Fund has done a lot of work this morning by putting the issues in proper perspective. I mean, clearly, even if you look at the document that I was reading, uh, the document the Honorable MP was reading, there wasn't much of a difference. The only difference here is that I think, like Honorable Boyd, you said, he didn't go through the entire documents as he should. And I hear the Honorable Richard Boyd say that he was picking and selecting. I think probably that's where the misunderstanding okay, is. Okay, but it's also unfair but the fact for the remains, guest fund to not provide that yeah, significant clarity fact, that all of this ends at 20 That is a discussion in Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about projects that are standing in our communities. Okay. So let me just recap. Yeah, please, go He's ahead. He's done 127 tertiary institution infrastructure, completed. So there are some that are ongoing. 1,200 infrastructure in our senior high schools have been completed. There are some that are ongoing. 14 of the e-blocks that were ongoing that we inherited have also been completed and added onto the previous 27 or 23 that was completed. And then 1,114 has been done at the basic schools. I think that these facts are very important takeaways for your viewers as we are discussing education, especially under infrastructure. And once the main man who sits behind the desk has clarified, that settles the, the But it doesn't issue. take anything away from the fact that we know teacher trainees uh, have been struggling to receive their funds. Um, I've seen your post on Facebook where you yourself are calling on your own government yeah. to expedite action on payment. It's clear. I mean, so, look so, at, so it's clear. Me, we should so, have allowed... Um, so you, we moved on from the get mm -hmm. fund, etc. Yes, okay, so my figures were solid. Now, on to the E-Levy. The E-Levy issue that Honorable raised. And he made a point. I've seen TV3 quickly put it up on Facebook. E-Levy will be repelled immediately and DC comes to power. I can bet you on everything that I believe in. And I'm sure a lot of Ghanaians also believe in that. The record of the NDC and the record of their flag bearer shows that talk is air. Like they say in P, Kasai and Frama. And what they are saying now about the E-Levy, they said a similar thing about the communication service tax in 2007. In fact, the same way they are saying, the same day they came to, they come to office, they will repel. The reason why Ghanaians don't believe the reason why Ghanaians have Ghanaians told you they don't believe. Am I not a Ghanaian? I don't believe. That is you. Yes. My, so, my mother so, doesn't so, believe. So the point, but so, the point so is the reason why, why do you think the reason why, why so we because don't believe. they didn't repeal communication service that you don't think they will repeal. And a lot of other things. Show me one again, document where again, they will repeal. Again. I don't know. So it's I'm waiting for you to respond. It's in a parliamentary hansard. I'll give you the data. Okay, so you get it. It's in a parliamentary hansard. Even the flag bearer of the NDC, who was then a member of a parliament in 2007 were part of the people who stood against it. Harun Adrusu, Honorable um, John Dramani Mahama then, and Honorable Do Adyahu then. We're all here, we're all in this country. They said they would repel it. When they came into office, they actually increased it in 2013. So, so, you, don't, here, so you don't believe they will they no, because, be able to because repel because the A-Levy is a good thing. He asked you, is government hiding something that if they come, it means they won't be able to Oh, repel no. It. Repelling a law is done in parliament. But the, the credibility, what you need to be able to repel a law is credibility, which the NDC doesn't have based on their record. Repelling a law doesn't take anything. It takes only one thing, credibility. Fulfilling takes, a promise. It takes, it takes the majority of no, members no, no. of parliament you have credibility, you can, to If you have credibility, you can get members of both sides to support you. Okay, if you have had, a majority in parliament, no, even if that you have, doesn't even matter. Even if you have minority and you have credibility, you can have both sides. We've had laws passed. Look at how you struggled to pass the E levy. Is but, it because you didn't lack credibility? Maybe they didn't believe in, they didn't believe in us. So the point I'm trying so to make is... So credibility, they are record. The record of the NDC shows that whenever they find themselves in opposition, especially in the second term, 
what they do is that they put their ears on the ground and listen to a few things from their followers, and then they start putting it out as So as you, you, don't, you don't think that it would be possible to repeal the E-Levy? They would not have any reason to repeal because the E-Levy is going to provide massive infrastructure in the road sector for the people of Ghana. The E-Levy is going to lead into creation of entrepreneurs in the youth, within the youth and employment sector for the people of Ghana. And so by the time they get the opportunity to come to power in 2032, E-Levy would have brought so much energy to the people of Ghana that they realized that the sense in it was solid. In any case, who said the people of Ghana were going to ride on such air talk and give them power in 2024? So, so let's put that aside. Now, moving on onto the issue of the crossroads. I, I'm sure we don't have much time because yes, it's distracted so make, the whole you can make the final I point. think that the people of Ghana are so too wise at this point, and we understand clearly who really is at a crossroad. We found ourselves at the crossroad in 2016, and we took a decision to take a certain direction. That direction is what has led us into having a long-term plan for the education sector, which has led to massive performance at all levels, from basic to senior high school. Massive infrastructural provision at all levels, from basic to senior high school, even to the point where the government has passed a law that ensures that Garanta rule, that was a big inhibition to the poor person having access to loans at the tertiary level, has also been You've removed. ignored all that the is, issues that I raised are, about increase in fuel prices, increase in transport, <laughs> the deterioration me, of the If you city. give me an additional two hours, you can oh, pick all of them really? well. but, I'm Secondly, just, but you've not made it look like that is something that worries If you give me that, two, oh, if you no, give me two I'm more saying, hours. But the point is, are you not aware that this all of this, in all, in all of this, I made a fundamental point at the go. I said that they were latching onto an opportunity. That tells you that there's an admission of a challenge. We had solid challenges in the fuel sector. Okay, we have massive challenges with inflation, and we have massive challenges with our city depreciation. And justifiably so, looking at the global economy right now. Yesterday, I was reading that in Turkey, Turkey of all places, the mother of all industrial countries, is moving around 70% in terms of inflation. The last time when the vice president gave a speech, you remember the breakdown that he gave with respect to inflation across, and I'll, I'll quickly run through a, a few. The United States of America, Okay, as of 2019, had an inflation rate of 1.81%. As of 2019, 20, as of 2020, they are hovering around 7.9%. And now I hear they are around 8.1%, unprecedented in the history of, of their country. The UK, today, I hear is also hovering around 7%, the highest in about 40 years or so. Go to Cote d'Ivoire. Our neighbors quote the word that they keep, they keep referring You've to. You've also been referring that to they them keep as referring well. to. I mean, he referred to it in, in, the, in the statement okay. that they also got affected by COVID. Cote d'Ivoire has had their inflation move from 0.81% to almost about 4.6%. About 5.68 increase in a factor increase in, in their inflation. The point I'm making is that this government has never run away from the present danger, the present challenge with, with our economy. The vice president, when he was speaking, admitted this and indicated that some efforts are being made to ensure that we mitigate the effect on the people of Ghana. Come to think of it, some of the things that this government had instituted between 2017 and 2019, if they were not in place, Jifa, imagine if they were not in place, and in this space of a pandemic and this space of global economic crisis, where would the people of Ghana find their feet? If not for anything, four prices are high, we agree. It has third party uh, implications, third party effects is the reason why we are going through this. And the government also has a role to play to mitigate this. But in the midst of that, your child that is going to the school has been paid for, for which reason you get some savings to be able to cushion you. We are not saying that is all you need, but that is some relief that was not in existence in the past. In the past when we had the energy crisis, in the past where interest rates were high, in the past where inflation was high in 2016, we did not have any global okay. economic challenge. All right. We did not have any global economic challenge. We could not point to even a single country that we're doing better than in terms of inflation. But today, we can point to some of the superpowers that we are doing better than in terms of inflation, okay. in terms of interest rates, in terms of the economic challenges. Okay. The people Thank of you. Ghana, I, I the people, let me wrap up. Okay, I haven't spoken finish. enough today. Okay. The people of Ghana ad, ad, understand the language that we're speaking, that we have genuine, germane challenges in these sectors. But government is making effort to mitigate them. In the midst of all of this, in the midst of all the crisis, government has not taken away the social safety net of the people. Government hasn't taken away the things that the government gives to the people to relieve them a bit. When we had a little crisis that was self-inflicted in 2016, under the NDC, they took Why do away... you keep referring to Because the they spoke. Are we not probing the NDC speech? Well, they 
refer to things happening today. And I'm referring to not them. Not things that happened in 20. No, they spoke. Okay. When he spoke, do you know what he said? We have time when to he address spoke, the When he spoke, do you know what so he said? So I need to let what he said was that person, when the people please. of Ghana give him power, he will fix these things. So we refer to him. Okay. So, Honorable Dapiamako, your final points. Yes. First of all, in 207, mm -hmm. when this country, when we had the energy crisis, we saw pastors go to pray over Kusumbodam. When John Mahama came, we could have blamed his predecessors. He solved the problem. So we are not, we are not a government that blame people. Jifa, what we are saying is that this government continue to blame other things other than itself for our economic difficulties. And the president says, when he regains power, he will restore. It's the restoration that has put fear of God into them. But hey, Jifa, they continue to, to make fetish of education. The figures that they are providing to parliament do not lend credence to what they say. I'll quote another figure. Page 7, table 6. Uncompleted projects. E blocks pre to 2017, 38. Uh, 2017 to date, zero. Total, 38. He just said that they completed e, e, e blocks. They came to parliament to say that they didn't complete the e block. They are still at the stage of incompletion. This is his figure. I am not saying it. So when you confront them with their own figures, then they run away. If I so. We are saying that when they speak of credibility, the government that promised to, to repeal taxes, including ESLA and all, today, they have increased it. They are benefiting from it. So if we speak of credibility, it is this government that lacks credibility to do a lot of the things that they claim they'll do in opposition when they, when they regain power. So our resolve to repeal E-Levy is uncontroverted. Is not in doubt. Even in the minority leader in concluding his, his remarks on the floor before we walked out, he said so. So they can we can say all, all kinds of things about that. But if God willing, we, we regain power in 2025, January, we'll repeal E Levy. What about the and, point and you hold made? on? And I and I heard him say that we'll come to power in, in 2032. I see. And they think that they'll, 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 they'll stay in power in 2025. He asked me what, what, what makes we think that we'll get power in 2025. And, I, and I'm also asking him what makes him think that we'll come to power in 2032 and not 25. So, <laughs> so, so, so you see, when you are in power, when you are in power, let when you are in you. power. Well, so the people trust us more than they Oh, really? Yes. As Is simple that, as that. that yes. 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 Uh, you don't, yes. You are not in the streets. The people trust us more than they No, okay. you are not then, in the streets. Then before we go, you are in schools in the presidency, so you don't have I'll allow you just okay. two more minutes. Let yes. me just read this message because he says, how do we know if people trust you. People are listening to this show. Me, I'm, I don't know who yes, they yes, are. Yes. But this really one, going to this one says, it's from Kizito in Tema East. Jifa, tell Dennis to stop the lectures and deal with the topic. <laughs> what did the MPP government do in 2016 to grow in 2017? If he believes JM did nothing to solve the problem of doing so, then they should shut down all the badges the NDC brought. But the badges were and there. They were there and we had lights out. This one says, Dennis. They were there. Dennis says the MPP restored nursing training allowance. Yes. Since last year up till now, they have not paid. That is restored. What they is the essence of restoring and you are not delivering? You, Omar, you can borrow against it. Uh, that's from Allah Sampele. You can borrow against it. This one from Belinda. She asks, is Mr. Dennis in Ghana? Yes. All the problems he may, he's mentioning are still in Ghana and even worse yeah, now. So nobody is even talking about no, no, this. Oh. This one says that we must call, call a spade a spade and not a tool uh, for digging. Jifa, correct yourself. Uh, former President Mahama said a new NDC government will abolish E-Levy, not him. 
Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, okay. But thank you very much, gentlemen. I need to bring you back because we couldn't discuss the because 33, you didn't the 33 no. billion no, 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 COVID no, 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 levies. No, 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 the 33 billion anyway. COVID funds. No, no, no. We couldn't discuss no, 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 that. No, no, no. I thought you said you gave me two minutes. How? Yes, you want another two have minutes? I'll get it. You'll get it. How? Okay, so I'll give you one minute. Now, now the... The, the other issue is about that accountability mm -hmm. that they experienced. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to yes, do that. Yes, but you see, we, we moved the motion to have Parliament inquire into the expenditures. In 2020, for instance, they said they had, they had put aside about 600 million Ghana cities to pursue Agenda 111. During the 2021 media review, they said that, oh, that money had been sent into some account in the Bank of Ghana. As we speak, we are in May 2022. Agenda 111 has not taken off. Meanwhile, the, 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 the COVID-19 recovery levy that they came to Parliament to levy us, proceeds of this are supposed to fund some of this project. That was what they told us, because the Agenda 111, according to the President, is supposed to help improve our health infrastructure. Two years down the line. Nothing is happening in that subsector. Okay. Well, so, don't you want so, to account for COVID funds? Uh, uh, Quick one. Don't you want to account for COVID have, funds? I mean, what isn't there a process to account for anything in Ghana? But and, Parliament and, has, and, has and, asked to. Why do you keep blocking and, and, Parliament from and, doing that? And again, it is not true that to date Agenda One One has not taken off. It is all over the country. <laughs> it's. Um, I'm just looking at one at Achem Kwabin that is ongoing. <laughs> if you go to Koforidu, the regional hospital is ongoing. So many, if you go to Achemansa, I am Kodi Opon Kromes, it's all over the place. So again, he sits on TV and he says it's wrong. He won't let me speak. Three things. He won't let me speak. Then it's three okay. things are all over the place. So you mention, oh, don't Achim. worry about it. So mention it quickly. So, so that I mention all the one-on-one one, 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 that are ongoing. Mention the one-on-one. So all the one, one, they are all ongoing <laughs> across the country. So if you sit on TV and say nothing, you see, the problem I have. Nothing. No, he said nothing. Uh, should I go and I'll cut the <laughs> video and play it for you? He said nothing. He said he hasn't taken and you see, off. he doesn't get the figures because he's always in a rush to just put out the, the falsehood about, no, no, the, about the government. No, no, no. He said nothing has, he hasn't okay. taken off. None, no, no. none has so taken off. So some are It's ongoing. a complete falsehood. No. Agenda it 1 is, one is ongoing. In fact, if you listen no. to the health minister yesterday, there are some areas with genuine concerns that have issues. For example, if you go to Kokomlimli area, there is one there. Even land is a problem. Tema West, where I live, the last time I engaged the MC, they were now trying to get a space within the area for the project to take off. And for which reason, maybe the design for Tema West will even have to vary because of the space and probably having to high rise the building. I think in as much as we want power and we want to say anything to make power, let's put out the facts first and then we can add all the twists and whatever we want. But if you continue to pick and choose like honorable attempted this okay. one with the get fund, it's all not right. fair to the people of Ghana. I'm being told your one Jifa, minute is over. Jifa, I have you are giving me another one minute. No, I have in my hand. <laughs> no, Jesus Jifa, Christ. Jifa, I, have, I, I, have, I have in my hand the press statement on the economy by the Minister of Finance. Another one minute. <laughs> His comments on agenda. All right. One, one, so this is where we have to end the show. Thank you very much for watching. It's been a full basket today. I'm Jifa Bampo. Thanks to my production team who've been tolerant of all that has gone on today. Up next is Warm Up Plus.